Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how we can build a GraphQL country set. So as you can see, um, we have a list with all the countries we have on this planet. And for each country, we also get a little bit of uh, details. So if we click on Algeria, for example, we get the continent, the capital, the currency, and the languages that are spoken there. And as I said, for that, we will use GraphQL. So what is GraphQL actually? I'm sure most of you have already dealt with REST APIs in Android. So things we usually interact with using Retrofit or Kdoc Client. So just APIs where we send HTTP requests and then the server will, will decide what the response will be. And I'm sure many of you have also already dealt with local databases. So something like a room database, an SQLite database in the end, where we can save stuff and we can easily define queries to query certain data and then, yeah, display that in our UI. Now, when it comes to GraphQL, that is actually a mix between a local database and a remote API in, in terms of uh, REST APIs. Because REST APIs often have the problem that they give us much more data than we actually need. So you, you probably have seen a very, very large JSON responses and in the end, you often just display two, three, maybe four fields of that response. But in the end, you still get all that data that you don't even need in the app. And GraphQL solves that problem. So GraphQL, in the end, as I said, is a mix between a local database and a REST API. So with that, we can define queries to our remote API to only get the data we really need in the app to minimize network traffic. And you will learn how you can take advantage of that. But before we start with this, one more thing, you can currently get 20% off on all my advanced Android premium courses on my website. These courses will help you to become an industry ready Android developer. So if you want to learn things like a multi-module architecture, building apps for iOS and Android using Kotlin with KMM, or just building custom UI with Canvas, then definitely check out the first link in this video's description. The sale will only last for a few days and most of you will probably also know that I don't do these sales very often. So if you've been thinking to get these courses for a while, then now is a very good chance to do so. To apply the discount, you can simply use the discount code FEBRUARY20 during checkout. So check the first link in this video's description and now let's get started with the video. First of all, I want you to go to this website, which I will link down below, which is on studioapollographql.com. Apollo is the GraphQL client that we will use, so the equivalent to Retrofit just for GraphQL. And this website kind of also serves as a documentation for a lot of GraphQL APIs. In this case, we will use the free and open countries GraphQL API, which just yeah provides a lot of country related data. And here you can already see that we have these queries here with GraphQL, where we just define, hey, we actually only care about the name of a country, um, the native language, the capital emoji, and so on. And if we only wanted the name of the countries, then we could leave away all this stuff here in this query to only get names. However, it's not as easy as with the REST API that we just send a request to some kind of endpoint and get our data. No, we actually need some kind of, uh, yeah, a little bit of setup in Android Studio before we were able to, able to do that. On the one hand, we need to get familiar with the schema of the GraphQL API that we will use. We can get to the schema clicking on this icon here. And the schema basically is the, the same as the database schema. It defines or it gives our API client or GraphQL client an idea of what kind of data it can actually get. So here, for example, we get the possible queries that we could make with this API. So we could query continents, uh, a single continent. We could query multiple continents. We could query uh, multiple countries, a single country, single language and multiple languages. And then if you want to try that out, and this website also takes care of that, you can click on this explore icon here, and then you get a little code field where you can yeah, just test your queries. So we could, for example, have this query here. We want to query for multiple countries. So we specify countries as it's said in the schema. And let's say we only care about all names of our countries. So we just specify the name field as it's also specified in the schema. If we then run the query here, we get the response where it just contains a list of all countries and we just get the name. So with a typical REST API, we can not easily um, define these queries like that. It's actually only the server who then decides what kind of data it will respond with. And let's say we now decide, okay, we actually also need the language for the corresponding country. Then we can simply include that here, just specify language. And let's say we care about the name. Uh, I'm not sure if that will run, no. Nope. Probably languages, yes, because we, yeah, a single country, of course, can have multiple languages, which is why that's plural. Um, so let's run the query again. And this time 
we get all the languages for each country as well. So now you hopefully understood what GraphQL actually is, but the next step is to learn how you can now use that in your Android app. So in the end, we want to be able to run these queries in our Android app to get the data in there just as normal um, API call we know already from REST APIs to then display that data in our UI. And the first thing you need to do here before you start coding is you need to go to this video's description and clone the initial repository from my GitHub. The reason is that the GraphQL client we will use is a Kotlin multi-platform client. So it, it even works in KMM projects. And I have not found a way to make it work in uh, Gradle Groovy files. So I just set up the basic um, Gradle Kotlin file. So you can see I have built a Gradle KTS here and built a Gradle KTS for the project file which are just a bit different, but I think we don't need to actually code all that and migrate all that in this video. I have a separate video about migration uh, for Gradle, which yeah, I will link up here. So if you care about uh, how you can do that, you can simply watch that video. It's in the end, just a different version of Gradle, which will work exactly the same. It's just a little bit more Kotlin-ish. So let's quickly go through what we actually need to add to make Apollo work, so our GraphQL client. On the one hand, that is this um, Apollo GraphQL plugin which we commonly use with the version 3.7.3. Uh, we then need to specify this Apollo config block where we specify a service. Um, doesn't need further explanation, not really important. Um, the important thing is that we set the package name here where our GraphQL files will actually be generated or which kind of, um, with which package name in the end. Since the way Apollo works is very similar to the way Room works, for example. So for those of you who don't know Room, it's basically just a local database library or framework for Android, which makes it very easy to define yeah, a database schema and then just generates a lot of helpful classes behind the scenes for us. So we don't need to specify a lot of logic. And with Apollo, it's the same. It will actually generate a lot of classes behind the scenes, depending on how our queries actually are, so that we in the end have uh, type safe classes and fields. So make sure you have this block of code here and replace it with your package name or leave it like that. If you just clone the repository, then we wanna scroll down to our normal dependencies. And here it's important that you have these dependencies for the project. On the one hand, we have our Apollo runtime dependency, which just gives us access to the normal Apollo client. And the remaining dependencies are just what we need for building this project. So we have view model compose to get view model functionality in Jetpack Compose. And I included Dagger Hilt. So we actually are able to inject dependencies in our view models using Hilt. And then in our built Gradle project file, um, I think the only thing that changed is this Dagger Hilt class path. So that, yeah, Hilt is just known in yeah for our Gradle plugin. And when we are already talking about plugins, one thing we need to do to conveniently work with GraphQL is the Android Studio plugin for GraphQL. So we want to open the settings in Android Studio, go to plugins, and here under marketplace, you want to search for GraphQL. You'll make sure that you install this GraphQL plugin because in the end, we need to define our queries somewhere in our project so that our Apollo client actually knows what it should query for at our API. And this plugin will just come with syntax highlighting for these queries and just uh, yeah, provide a very easy way to create these. So make sure you install this, restart Android Studio, and then you're actually good to start coding. The first thing you will notice if you run this app as it is, is that GraphQL will complain. Um, it says no schema file found in source main GraphQL. The reason we get this error is that, well, we did not define any schema. So our client needs to know what kind of fields it could potentially get from the API. And to get that schema, we need to go to the API website and actually go to schema here. We can then click on SDL, I think. And yes, here, this is the URL we now need. So you should copy that because um, from this URL, we can then automatically download the schema, which is defined here. So each API needs to specify that. And we simply need to include that in our app. So going back to Android Studio, we want to go to our terminal and add this command. So on the one hand, we want to refer to the Gradle wrapper to execute a Gradle task. And the task is called download Apollo schema, which just comes with the Apollo Gradle plugin. We then need to specify an endpoint from where it should download that schema, which is the one we just copied. And then we define a schema directory, um, so which is under app source main GraphQL computer coding. So this is the package name we defined here in this um, Apollo block. And then we just call that schema GraphQL. If we execute this, 
we hopefully don't get any errors. So it will now download that. It has built successful. And if we now take a look at our project under app, under source, in main, then here we now have a new GraphQL folder in which we now have our schema that was downloaded from the API. Cool, so in this folder, the next thing we need to do is we need to define our different queries, which we want to use to query certain data from that API. So we wanna right click here on uh, this package name, new and go to the very bottom where we select GraphQL file, which comes from the Android Studio plugin. And we call this first query simply countries. So we now, first of all, want to have a query which just gets all of the countries uh, the API has to offer so we can display them in the list in our app. Let's hit enter. Uh, yes, let me add that to Git. And in here, we now define that query. We can go to Google Chrome again for that, click on Explorer and just copy this query here. Go back to Android Studio, paste this. As you can see, we get syntax highlighting. And now if we take a look in our app, we, what kind of data do we actually need for yeah, just displaying a country? And we actually don't need all the data we need to display a specific country. So we don't care about the continent because we don't display that in the list. We don't care about the currency and also not about the languages. We only care about like the emoji, the name and the capital. And we actually also want to have the country code so that if we click on a country, we can then retrieve or we can query the specific country using its unique identifier, which is the country code. So going back to our query here, which we can actually call countries query. We want to query for multiple countries. We want the name, we want the capital, we want the code and we want the emoji. We don't care about the languages, so we can remove that. And that is our very first query to get all the countries. We then want to copy this and create another query. Or let's actually copy the file instead, paste it and call this just country to query for one specific country. So here we now want much more data since this is the query we will run if we actually click on, on a specific country. So we first of all want to rename this to country. We want to rename this countries to simply country since we only care about a specific country. And you can already see a missing field argument code since that query now needs the country code we want to query for because we of course need to specify what kind of country we care about. And we can do this by specifying the code here and then having a dollar country code. So this will be the name of the Kotlin argument that will be generated. And we also specify that here. So we say dollar country code like this, which is an ID. So it's an identifier in the end. And now we specify the fields we need. On the one hand, we care about the code of the country. We care about the name, the capital, the emoji, the currency. We care about the languages that are spoken in this country. So we can say languages. And since that is a list and also refers to another kind of entity of our API, we need to use these um, curly braces. For the languages, we only care about the name and not like the language code. And we also care about the continent, which is also kind of a new entity. And for the continents, we also only care about the names. And this is our country query, which we can now use in our code. So if we now run this app again, we hopefully should not get any new errors. Nope, it actually perfectly runs. Of course, we don't see anything because we haven't built any UI yet. So let's um, go in our main package, Java, and now start building our Apollo client. So uh, the thing that will interact with the GraphQL API. We are going to build a clean architecture app here. So let's um, distribute our app in presentation, domain, and data. Let's start with data. And in there we will, now oh, let's actually start with domain. Mm, let's also create a domain package in there. And in the domain package, we will start to create a country client interface. This interface will basically just define the functions we use to access our API or to interact with our API. So on the one hand, that will be a suspend function, get countries, which will return a list of country. We don't have that country type yet, we actually do have a country tab. You can see it's coming from the country query, which was generated because I just launched the app. So if you did not launch the app, you will probably not see that. And then you simply need to yeah, launch it or rebuild the project. But I actually like to create a domain level uh, model for this because otherwise you will bind the rest of your app 
to these um, generated classes. And as soon as they change, uh, you need to change your whole app. So these generated country classes here from country career, for example, would be the equivalent to what we call a DTO from yeah, a REST APIs. And we can probably also look into this, uh, holding down command or control, clicking on that. Then we see that we now have a country class that was generated, a data class, and it has these fields. But let's not care about that and instead go into domain and start creating our normal country class. Um, well, let's actually call this one simple, com simple country, which is the one we will display in the UI, which has less information. Select data class, and this will just have code, which is a string. It will have a name, it will have an emoji, and it will have a capital like this. And we can then copy and paste this simple country class called this detailed country, which is the one we display in our, yeah, in our little dialog, which will have the same fields, but some more in addition. On the one hand, we want the currency, which is a string. We want the languages, which yeah, we only care about the names of each language. So we just have a list of strings and we want the continent name. So continent. Now that we have that detailed country, we can go back to our country client and actually replace this with country from our package here. Let's import that from, oh, it's actually not called country. Uh, it's called simple country. So we just get a list of simple countries with less information. And if we want details about a certain country, we can have a suspend function, get country, we pass the code, and that gives us a detailed country, which is nullable since uh, it could theoretically be that the code does not exist. And now that we have this abstraction for our uh, Apollo client, we can write the actual implementation that will interact with our GraphQL API. So in data, we create a class, which we call Apollo um, country client, make that a class, and this will require a private val um, Apollo client in the constructor. And this is actually an Apollo client, which comes from the library. We need to make sure that we implement our country client interface so that we can simply override the functions here. On the one hand, get countries. And on the other hand, get country like this. And maybe if you're not super familiar with clean architecture, the reason we create this interface is simply that we want to decouple our data layer or the actual implementations of our app from the rest of the app. So imagine you would use this country client in a lot of view models of your app and you then at, at some point decide, uh, I actually don't wanna use Apollo for making the GraphQL queries or I actually don't want a GraphQL API anymore. Instead, I want REST API. And then as soon as you make that change, you will normally need to change your whole product. So you will need to change your UI layer. You will need to change your domain layer. You will need to change your data layer. But having this abstraction, we want to basically achieve that we only need to swap out the certain implementation and not change the rest of our project. So if we would decide to use the REST API instead, the only thing we would need to change is this Apollo country client. We would need to make it some kind of REST country client or so and use a retrofit in instance and just change this class's content. Since the rest of our app will depend on our country client abstraction, which just defines what kind of functionality we actually get from a country client, which is independent of how we actually get these countries. So that will mean the rest of our project will not need to change in that case. I hope that made it clear. Let's go to Apollo country client and start implementing these functions. It's actually super easy to um, yeah, get the data now from our GraphQL API. We simply want to return Apollo client that query. And here we need to define the query we now want to run. This is our country's query, which was generated here. Since we defined that in our folder, we then want to actually execute that query, which is a suspending function, as you can see. So since the Apollo library is a pure Kotlin library, we of course also get all the cool idiomatic um, Kotlin features like coroutines and suspend functions. We now got a list of, um, well, actually, we now just got an Apollo response of country's query data. We now need to convert that. So we need to refer to dot data, which gives us um, a country's query dot data. As you can see, we then want to have a null check and refer to the countries that we got out of the out of that query, which gives us a list of countries query dot country. So it's not a simple country yet, but we can use a map function to map these countries to our simple countries. And for that, what we use in clean architecture is called a mapper because it maps things. Um, so we're gonna go to our data layer, 
create that and call it countries or country mapper. Just country mappers. And in here, we will have extension functions for our GraphQL queries. So country query dot country dot to detailed country, which will return a detailed country. Here we want to return that detailed country. The code is just the code from the country we get here. We call this on. Um, the name is the name. Emoji is emoji. Capital is capital. The currency is currency. Um, the languages is um, languages. And you can see here we get actually get a list of languages, but we only have a list of strings. So we also need to map these to simply refer to their name. Actually map not null since these names could be uh, null. And in that case, we will simply ignore these with map not null. And we want the continent, which is simply the continent, that name. For the capital, this could also be nullable, but our capital is not nullable. If it is nullable, or if it is null, we want to simply use no capital here. Same for the currency, no currency. And now we have a very easy way to convert our yeah, DTO objects, so what we get from the API, to our domain level models, which we use in the rest of our app. So we also want to do the same for our countries query. So countries query dot country dot to simple country this time. Simple country, simple country. And here we just remove the fields we don't want to have in a simple country. This mapping logic should always happen in the data layer. So we do this in our client. So here in this map function, we can simply say it dot to simple country. And if that's null, we just return an empty list. And that is how we execute our country's query to get the data, convert them to simple countries. And then, yeah, we will actually call this function in a use case. We will use the use case in our real model to then display these countries in our UI. Let's do the get country function next. And here we want to return Apollo client that query. This time is the country query for which we need to pass the country code. So we just pass our code. We call execute again, we call data again, we call yeah, country again, since now we refer to a single country, we call that two detailed country, and boom, we got a working function because this returns yeah, a notable detailed country. We don't need to uh, have this check here. Okay, the next step will be to create our use cases. And I will tell you right away, I would not use use cases in this project, but since I know if I don't use use cases here and I write clean architecture on the title, then a lot of you will come and say, oh, Philip, this is not real clean architecture. So I will just do it, but I'll tell you my opinion. Um, don't overcomplicate your projects like this. A simple app like this does not need use cases and even much bigger apps very often don't need use cases. They have their purpose and very often it makes sense to create these, but I'm not a big fan of creating so many use cases which just call a function of, in this case, your country client to yeah, provide these for your view models. And in the end, the only thing our use case will do is to sort our countries by their name, which we could also do here. But since it's considered business logic in this case, we should put it in a use case if we strictly want to stick to clean architecture. So my recommendation is don't overcomplicate things. But if you want to learn how clean architecture really works, and if you strictly want to stick to it, then yeah, we just create these use cases here in domain, creating a new class, get countries use case. So we'll have one use case for getting the countries and one use case for getting a single country, which our view models will then use. But as I said, it will be totally fine if you just directly access your country client in your view model. You won't violate anything with that since your view model is allowed to interact with the main and it only depends on this um, abstraction on this interface. So yeah, feel free to do that. I would do that in a personal project, uh, but let's now get to the use cases. Um, here, we first of all want reference of our country client or abstraction. And then we just have a function execute, which will then execute our query. So that will give us a list of uh, simple countries. And we just return country client, uh, get countries. And we want to sort them sorted by their name. That needs to be a suspend function since get countries is one as well. And that is already our use case. So in case you're wondering and you have no idea what clean architecture is, the reason we create this use case or the reason clean architecture intends it 
is that these um, follow the single responsibility principle. So you definitely make sure that such a use case class only has one single responsibility, one single reason to change because it will only have this single function that it exposes. And that makes them very reusable. And that makes it also very easy to understand the structure of your project. If you just look at the name, you know what the class will do. However, the downside is, as I said, they add a lot of unnecessary complexity. And especially for small projects, this is total overkill. Um, it makes sense for large projects where you have lots of developers working on these and where lots of people need to understand or quickly understand what, um, what your code base does and where to find things. But in most, really in most projects, you don't need this extra complexity. So let's duplicate this get countries use case class, paste it and call this get country use case. This will also use our country client and here it will simply uh, actually return a detailed country nullable and here we don't need to sort anything oops we just want to call get country passing the code we pass to this function like this and that is our get country use case so now the next step is to create our view model which will now have the responsibility to use these use cases to query our data and then map the results to UI state. So we go to our root package, create a presentation package for our UI logic. And in this package, we will create a countries view model, make a class, make that inherit from view model. And this will need, oops, um, this will need a constructor where we on the one hand want to pass our get countries use case and our get country use case. Then the next step is to define a state class. So the state class will just um, kind of summarize or combine the different fields we care about in the UI. So the different fields that could change um, something in our UI. So we want to have a data class country state. And on the one hand here we want to have a list of countries of simple countries by default an empty list we want to have an is loading boolean so if we are initially loading the list we want to show a little spinner false initially and we want to have a reference to the selected country which is currently shown in the dialog which is a detailed country this is nullable and null by default and if this is not null we know we need to show a dialog we then want to have a private val country state or just state here, mutable state flow, and then initialize the country state. We then have the public exposed version for our state, which is underscore state as state flow. The reason we do this is that only the view model should be able to change the state, not the UI. So the UI will get an immutable version of the state flow while the view model can change this. That makes sense because um, uh, that highly reduces the amount of places where errors or bugs could happen. Since if only the view model can change your state, you also know that for state related bugs, you only need to look in this view model. And with this two state flows, we just enforce this rule. We then want to have an init block because initially if we launch our screen, if we open our screen, we want to directly query all countries. So we launch a coroutine and view model scope. And we first of all want to update our state to change the loading value. So is loading is now true. And then after that, we want to update our state with the retrieved countries. So on the one hand, the countries list is get countries use case dot execute and is loading will be false. And this will of course suspend for the amount of time it takes to um, finish that request. And after that is loading will also be set to false. What other functions we also need in our view model? Well, we need a function to select a country. So we pass the code of the country we clicked on and then we will launch another curtain in view model scope since, since we now want to run our get country query to get a single country. And here we say state update it copy. Um, the selected country will now be, oops, selected country will be get country use case dot execute by passing our code. And then the last function we need is a function to dismiss the country dialog simply if we tap outside to hide it again. So here we can simply say state update it copy and here the selected country 
will be reset to now. We then want to create our country's uh, screen. So now we get to the actual UI, um, countries screen, select file, make it a composable, call that country screen, which will just get a reference to our country's state like this. And it will actually also have two callback functions. On the one hand, if we select a country, so on select country, here we get the code we clicked on, which is a string and it returns nothing. And we want to have a function on dismiss country dialog, which is also just an empty lambda. So in here, we first of all want to have a box that surrounds everything, which we will pass a modifier fill max size for. And in this box, we first of all want to check if we are currently loading countries, because if that's the case, we want to show a circular progress indicator. We need to make sure that it's displayed in the center of our screen. So we say modifier align center. And if we're not loading, we want to display a lazy column with all of our simple countries. So we say lazy column. We say the modifier is modifier fill max size. And here we can define an items block to add all of our countries to our lazy column. So state at countries get a reference to each country. And then here we want to display each single country in our list. Let's create these composables down here. So on the one hand, that is a composable for a country item. We can make this private. And this will on the one hand need a, a simple country to be displayed and it will need a modifier, an optional one that we can pass here to change the appearance of this. So what we'll basically build here is, um, let me launch my other app again, is simply this list item. So we will have a row where we first of all display the emoji and then we will have a column where we display the title or the name of a country on top of the uh, capsule of the country. So let's have our row first. Modifier is our modifier. Let's also make sure that we center these um, countries vertically. So center vertically. In here, we will first of all have a text. The text will be country.emoji. To make the emoji bigger, we can increase the font size to something like 30 SP. Import SP, pressing Alt Enter. We then want to add a little bit of spacing. Let's say a width of 16 dp. Import dp as well, pressing Alt Enter. And then, as I said, we'll have a column for displaying our country name and the capital. So here, the modifier will be modifier weight 1f. What that will achieve is that it will simply occupy the remaining space in our outer row. So here, this column will actually span this whole remaining space. In here, let's have a text again for the name of the country and the font size is, let's say, 24 SP. Add some spacing again of, let's say, 8 dp here. Well, let's also choose 16 dp. And then just have a text for the country's capital, like this. And if we now scroll up, go inside of our lazy column and add these country items, we can pass the country here. We also want to add a modifier to make it on the one hand fill the max width to make it clickable. Since if we click on a country, we want to execute our on select country lambda, passing the country dot code, and we want to add some padding of 16 dp. That should be enough to execute our country's query and display that in our UI. So we have not implemented the detail query yet or the functionality to display the dialog. Maybe we should try this out first. Um, of course, what we still are missing is the dependency injection setup with Dagger Hilt, since our view model at the moment does not know where it should get these use cases from. And our use cases don't yet know where they should get this country client from. And our country client does not yet know where it should get this Apollo client from. And this is the problem we will try to solve with Dagger Hilt and yeah, with dependency injection in general. So on the one hand, the first thing if we set up Hilt is that we created an application class. We can call this countries app in our root package. Make that inherit from application. 
and annotate it with Hilt Android app. So just that Hilt knows where our app is and where it can get the application context from to create dependencies. Then in our root package, we want to create a DI package, so dependency injection. And in this DI package, we create an app module in which we just define or tell Dagger Hill how it should create the different dependencies, so the different classes and objects we want to have in our app. On the one hand, we specify that the module with this annotation, and we specify the install in annotation to install that in the singleton component like this, which will just make sure that all the dependencies, all the classes we create in this app module will live as long as our application. On the one hand, we want to have a function that provides our Apollo client, which returns an Apollo client. And here we want to simply return Apollo client that builder. This is similar to ret retrofit here, which you might be familiar with, where we need to specify a server URL, which is simply this URL, which we also used in yeah, to download the schema. You can get this from Chrome right here, the endpoint. And we could also further um, customize this. We could add interceptors similar to retrofit. We could specify the core team dispatcher, HTTP config stuff. Um, nothing really we care about. So let's just call build. Oops, not server URL again, just build. And we are good. We then want to annotate this function with provides and a singleton. Provides just uh, yeah, marks this, this as a provides function. So Dagger Hilt will automatically know how it can create such a client and then inject that in other class. So with injecting, we just mean passing it to, uh, to a class like this, for example. So here we inject the dependency Apollo client. The next thing we need is another provides function and singleton. which is our country client, which now depends on our Apollo client, which is why it's a dependency. This will be an, a country client, so our abstraction. And here we simply return our Apollo country client and pass our Apollo client. And since that's a provides function, Dagger Hill now knows how to create an Apollo client. It also knows how to create a country client because a country client just needs this Apollo client. We can then copy this and do the same for our remaining two use cases. Provide a get countries use case. This will now need our country client, this one here, and return a get countries use case. And here we return a get countries use case passing our country client. And we now do the same one last time for our get country use case returns get country use case and get country use case. Cool. Now Dagger Hilt knows how to create all of our dependencies, but we're still not done with our Hilt setup yet. We need to go to our view model since our view models have the struggle that they need a view model factory to be able to pass custom arguments like here to the constructor. But since Hilt is smart enough to create that factory under the hood, we simply need to inject these dependencies in the constructor using this inject annotation combined with the view model or actually Hilt view model annotation. We then want to go to our main activity, annotate that with Android entry point, which indicates we want to inject dependencies from Hilt in this activity. And since the activity is an Android component, similar to services or broadcast receivers, we need to annotate this with Android entry point. Let's then also initialize our view model. So Val view model is equal to Hilt view model to get that view model from Hilt, which is a country's view model like this. We can then get the state from the view model using by view model dot state dot collect as state to get that as compose state. We can press alt enter to import that. And then we want to have our country's screen here, passing our state. Um, let's format that a bit. On select country will be a view model, select country with it. And we, can, we should actually also be able to say view model, double colon, select country. And on dismiss, country dialog will be empty for now. And then one last thing is we need to go to our Android manifest. 
add the internet permission since we of course interact with a remote API and in our application tag we want to add the name countries app which yeah just auto completes here and I would say we launch this and take a look in our emulator if this actually launches first of all and if it displays our list of countries yes it is launching we see our loading spinner and there are our countries and they are looking exactly as my app before which is very cool but of course right now if we click on a country nothing happens which we will now fix since we now want to display the country dialog and that won't be a lot of extra work from now for that we will go back to our countries screen and define another composable function called country dialog make it private and here we want to pass the country we want to display this time it's a detailed country we want to have an on dismiss function so when we dismiss the dialog and we want to have a modifier we can pass like this then in here we will have a normal dialog composable on dismiss request will just be our on dismiss function and I think we don't need to pass anything oops what did I do now I don't think we need to pass anything else here no we just want to have a column let's quickly check how that will uh, how that should look like um, so we will now have a column where we display a row of the emoji and the text and then just text for each piece of data which will be very simple the modifier of that column will be our modifier we passed and then as I said the first thing will be a row with the modifier modifier filmx width and we start with the emoji which we also specify down here this one actually together with the spacer we can paste this and then we can actually also copy the name from down here and display that after our emoji and then below our row we will just have another spacer with a height of 16 dp and now just our remaining texts are following so the first text is simply the continent colon and then we add the country's continent like this we can paste our spacer a few more times here actually change these to ADP and also copy the text a few more times like this because we also want to see the currency country.currency and we want to see the capital country.capital and we finally want to see the spoken languages and we can say languages like this since it could potentially have multiple spoken languages in a country and here we can't really say languages since it's a list and uh, we don't want to we want to format that a bit to do that we want to scroll up say val joint languages which is equal to remember and i will explain that in a moment no worries uh, remember country dot languages and we say country that languages dot join to string the reason we use um joint languages here with remember is that we want to display the languages like this say if we have multiple languages like german english um maybe french or so then we want to display them like this in the ui and that is what join to string will do so it will go through the list and it will yeah combine all these entries in the list so the strings the languages and yeah separate them with a comma by default since that is something we don't want to execute on every single recomposition of this dialog we use remember and recently recalculate that only if the languages of the lang of the country change so we can then scroll down and pass our joint languages here and for some reason here Android Studio wants to convert that to a template to display it like that for these other ones it does not complain I don't know why but let's just leave it like that and now if we scroll up back to our UI in this else block below our lazy column oops uh, we want to have an if check if the state selected country is not null so if we if we did select country then we want to display our country dialog the country will be state selected country um, the on dismiss function will be on dismiss country dialog and the modifier will be modifier dot clip we want to clip this to a rounded corner shape of 5dp corner radius we want to set the background to a white 
and we want to add some padding of 16 dp and i think uh, that should be it let's launch this take a look here in our emulator again our countries are of course still loading and if we now click on brazil for example then we do get all the um, data for brazil we uh, should probably also center the text here vertically in this row but other than that uh, it looks perfectly fine so we now have oh no if we click outside actually nothing happens um, because in main activity this lambda is still empty so here we want to say view model double colon dismiss country dialog relaunch and then yeah we can now click on another country in malaysia if we click outside that is now working perfectly fine very very cool so i hope you enjoyed this little graphql tutorial and you now understand how this works and you can actually use apollo client and graphql in your own apps if you enjoyed this and you also actually enjoyed all the architectural stuff in this video so clean architecture while we created these abstractions dependency injection and you just want to dive much deeper into these topics to really get to know what you need in the industry as an android developer then you should definitely check out my more advanced android premium courses in this video's description first link these will basically teach you this but at a much more advanced level this will on the one hand help you to become an industry ready android developer in the fastest time possible and on the other hand help me to still be able to maintain these free videos here on youtube so thank you for your support if you decide to get one of my premium courses apart from that i wish you an amazing rest of your week and i will see you back in the next video